introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I'd obviously like to echo Tom's thoughts in uh, thanking everyone who's made today possible. It's an amazing feat um, that we've, sorry, everyone else has really managed to achieve um, by coming from different continents to, uh, to actually manage to convene in one room. Um, I hope you'll agree with me that the bride and, of course, the bridesmaids all look fantastic. It's a lovely afternoon. All right, before I start... Um, no, let me just say that the uh, formative years I spent in the company of the groom means that he had as much of a part in developing my sense of humour as anyone. So although I tried to make this speech funny, witty and clever, please blame Tom if it's not. <laughs> <laughs> now, it is quite a daunting challenge as, as well as a massive honour um, to be asked to be a best man. Um, there's not only the tradition of keeping the groom out of trouble, which I all but managed to do if he hadn't broken his knee in the last few weeks. <laughs> wasn't there? Not. Um, looking after the rings, which I just about managed to carry off, but obviously writing and speaking this speech. Um, I've never been in a situation where I've had an audience from different counties before, let alone different continents of the world. So I thought to myself, what do I know about Canada? Now, I came up with this list, and if I'm honest with you, it is very, very poor. I've got Mounties. Come on, that's the first thing, isn't it? Yeah. Avril Lavigne. Snow. Some, some of you speak French. Uh, ice hockey. Celine Dion. Some bears of varying sizes. Maple syrup. And, of course, worst of all, Brian Adams. Still haven't quite forgiven me. So, never being afraid to do my research, I thought I'd jump on the internet. Which is a scary place to be, trust me. It turns out that there are lots of different traditions when it comes to weddings um, from both sides of the Atlantic. For example, that little tinging of the glasses uh, actually means speeches in this country, which is why I really panicked when... <laughs> 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 Does he mean my dessert? <laughs> it's very important to me, to say. <laughs> but also there's difference in the actual marriage process. Um, for example, uh, to get a marriage license in this country, you need to have proof of age and proof that you're single. Um, whereas in Alberta, for example, this is proper research, this. <laughs> Apparently, this is a quote, you need proof of age, a translator who is over 18 years of age, and, this is the best bit, if the groom is, and I quote, mentally challenged, <laughs> it is the responsibility of his parents to tell the bride and the bride's family. So, Bob, Nora, and Julie, I really hope that Richard and Jackie have let you know the bad <laughs> <laughs> Another one of the best man's duties, uh, an unenviable one, is to get the groom dressed on the morning. <laughs> uh, by that, I presumed it meant something along the lines of, you know, straightening the, uh, the cravat there, the carnation in the buttonhole, and supplying Dutch courage if and when the groom deemed necessary. So imagine my abject horror and fear when I arrived at Tom's house this morning to find him completely naked <laughs> standing at his front door waiting for me to dress him. <laughs> now I had to rapidly explain the principle again, uh, but you embarrassed me and you embarrassed the old lady who was walking past the door. <laughs> and most of all, you embarrassed yourself. <laughs> I've known Tom for many, many, many years, and he's always been a brilliant friend to me. Um, through thick or thin and all those other cliches, he's been there. And I'm thrilled and honoured, as I said, that he chose me to be his best man today. Now, gone are the days we used to do all the single guy stuff, you know, play video games all night and terrorise the whole island of Malta in one. <laughs> <laughs> Julie's actually made him into a better person. I mean, he now spends his time doing DIY, making CD cases and choosing curtains, and this morning he even asked me how I was feeling. <laughs> how I was feeling? I'm like, man, we don't feel, we just do stuff. We're never really sure we talked before, but it's always like, pass me the chips, or egg, or I'm not getting you dressed. <laughs> but to end my speech, and in all honesty, I actually, I really couldn't be happier for Tom and Julie. They are, in all senses of all the words, made for each other, and I've honestly never seen Tom happier. So, ladies and gentlemen, please raise your glasses and toast the happy couple, to Tom and Julie. And, um, well, my last act of my speech is to pass you over to Amanda.
Thank you.